Hello and welcome back to Green Hill Junction, um, part three of building the upper level. Um, so after the last video, I had uh, quite a few nice comments, uh, a few suggestions, which was uh, welcome. Um, and Ray uh, Musson, I think is your surname, so I pronounced that incorrectly, suggested that this board here was basically a big triangle that I do a, a staggered tunnel or bridge entrance sort of thing and that's what I originally had where you can see for the drawings here I kind of had that before I started building this and then I went away from it thinking it wouldn't work so uh, much doodling and angle drawing and general messing about with a pencil uh, later and I'm back at the staggered entrance uh, idea which I think has worked out rather nice um, there is plenty of clearance because you can see my tracks curve away so I had to be really careful to make sure there was enough clearance with all the supports which there is, I've been running trains back and forward um, and didn't plan this but um, my wee workers hut fits very nicely in the corner there for the yard so you know road down into the yard yard stuff workers hut and then I've got all the space around here for I don't know whatever a yard looks like that's well into the future um, I have cut this board a little bit short I kind of had that under there and it was just too close to that and it didn't look symmetrical so I moved it over and I'll either just polyfill that or I'll cut a wee bit of MDF to fit but um, yeah thanks for Thanks Ray for putting me back into the, the mind of a staggered entrance. Um, you'll be wondering why I've got this weird shape here rather than what was going to be the straight line. Um, okay, I'm still thinking about that. But my thinking was rather than just having a, a really ordinary straight line all the way up to there and then it coming out, what I'm thinking is having a retaining wall or an embankment that's going to come out there you know, maybe have the retaining wall there and an embankment sort of thing. So, that's there just now. Um, as scenery progresses, I'll uh, I'll reconsider that, but it's literally, if it's coming off, it's a simple job where I jigsaw along there, jigsaw along there, and it's gone. Um, the support is under here, so that's not going to get in the way, so that can come off, that can stay, you know, whatever suits me. So, uh, the other comment I had was from Anthony uh, saying it was a shame that I got rid of the angle bridges here and I agree I have been thinking about it thinking about it and thinking about it and you'll see that the supports I've put in are angled um, so again I have some leeway if I decide to even slightly angle stuff here it's all going to depend how the tracks run around here and how much space it leaves me to you know cut away bits here because I've put in this wee corner but that's just glued in. So still thinking on that one Anthony um, and again that's just going to be a case of as things progress it may get cut it might not get cut but it's better to have the straight line in just now and then cut it later rather than having to cut it and then having to basically replace that huge board. Um, so I'll just pan you around so you get the whole sort of way out of the upper level. So we're going through the station, and you know, that's about five foot long. You can see there's a that's basically four foot that train. So I've got about five foot long station curving away and then back in across the uh, the bridge, which I've actually had for a year now. That was my Christmas present last year, um, and it's still not getting used. Um, and it curves around there into the junction and where the incline comes up and then all the way along and then it will curve along the back of the big board and back into the station. So I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased with my joinery work I have to say and the next task is track line particularly starting with this junction and you'll see I've got my points I've managed to get extra track I've managed to get fish plates before everything got locked down yet again. So uh, 
well, I've got the stuff to keep me busy, so I might as well start building. So um, we'll uh, we'll focus on this junction next. So back in a bit. Right. First thing I need to consider um, before I put in this junction is where it's going to go. Now, what I learned from my last layout is that you cannot have a curve or a sudden change of direction, i.e. a point, um, at the end of an incline. And I'll show you why. Now, my incline is coming up here and it ends there. Okay, It's only a 2% incline, so it's, it's pretty standard um, for model railways. Okay? Um, so I've got my spirit level here. Not to show you how level it is, but to show you what you have to think about. So now bear in mind this is this bit is going up to there at a two percent angle. I could do the maths if I wanted, but I don't want to bore you too much. Um, and then this bit is flat. So two mil cork on the track bed there, two mil cork on the track bed there to level it all to even it all up. So there's no difference in height. And if I put the square level halfway you can see how that rocks because that's it on the incline that's it on the flat now that doesn't look like much and uh, it isn't much you're talking a few mil but you have to think about a train going up there now my longest local or locals are the Princess class, um, or the well, City of Bristol, City of Carlisle, Princess Elizabeth. They're twenty centimeters long. Now, if I just sort of mock this here, now this is think of this as a spirit level. So as that comes over there, that's getting pulled by the carriages. So that's going to have and the tender. So that's going to have more weight on it and the wheels at the front are going to get light. Granted this is extreme because I'm putting all my weight on the back of that but you know there is going to be a bit of a, a rock as the train comes up there the, the front's going to get light until the centre of gravity comes over onto the flat and then you know um, it'll, it'll level out essentially I don't know the technical terms but I'm sure you know what I mean so if I put the points right there, as the train comes up the incline, those wheels are going to be really light and probably not really overly in contact with the track. If I try to change the direction, they're not going to go. It'll just derail every time and every local will just derail. Um, so that's why you can't kind of put a curve or a set of points right at the end of an incline. So... What I need to do is, if I just pick the camera up, is I have measured 20 centimetres out, which is there. So if I bring City of Carlisle up to there, you will see at that point the engine is completely on the flat. Granted the tender and the carriages are still going over there, so there is going to be a bit of downward pressure, but the way the local is designed is you know, there's a bit of give in the body that shouldn't, that means the pony wheels will, will stay on the track. So I cannot start my junction until there. Um, which brings it all the way over here. And these are these are short radius points because I knew I was short on space here. Um, so it's going to mean this, this corner, the inside corner is a wee bit tighter than I wanted. And really I shouldn't be coming off a corner onto a set of points because this is in the flat, I'll get away with it. I might even just you know have four actually like five or ten sleepers straight and then curve it in. But yeah, if you're doing inclines, remember that if you're coming into a junction or a curve, you're gonna need to make sure that your local, whether it's a steam local or a diesel, which I'd imagine is longer than that is on the flat before you try and change its direction. So, uh, handy hint number one. So, um, yeah, let's get on with positioning this and I'll show you how I'm going to wire it up um, with the auto frogs and the general droppers. Right, that's the junction in place. Um, rather conveniently 
I've accidentally designed this so this, this bit can be lifted out uh, right now, which is going to make the, the electric so much easier. Um, so, if you imagine three tracks coming off here, three tracks coming off here, and I need to put the auto frogs onto the points. So, what I've done is I've drilled holes for the droppers either side, the auto frogs are already through. Let's turn over the board. So there's one auto frog, or wire for the auto frog, uh, wire for the frog even. There's the other. So what I'm going to do is keep this neat and tidy and simple. So as you can see, I've written what colour wire's got to be what. So I'm going to have three browns and three blues for the track. I'll have a brown and a blue for the auto frog as well, um, as well as it's been soldered on. So I don't want all these wires going through the other, through the main baseboard and down onto the bus wire. It's just got to be untidy. So I'm utilising my wee WAGO, WAGO, WAGO connectors again. So what's going to happen is auto frog gets soldered onto the, the frog wire. And there'll be two of the Wagyu connectors. So all the browns will go into one, all the blues will go into another. Blue from that will go in there, brown from that will go in there. And I'll have one wire coming out, one brown, one blue, which will go through that and into the main bus wire. Which means all the wiring is contained in here, neat and tidy. And I've only got one sort of feed going out and going down. So I'll go on with that um, because yeah, nobody wants to see me solder because I'm awful at it uh, and once I've got that all done I'll show you it set up and hopefully that makes more sense. Alright, so back in a bit. Right, so this is what I was I was trying to explain. Um, so you get the auto frog and you get the, the uh, frog wire soldered in. Blue and red feeds and then they go into the Wagyu connectors and you've got all the track feeds going off to the top side of the board. All I need to do is once I put this in is fit the actual dropper from that that's going to go through the baseboard. I'm not sure how long that's going to be so I'm going to um, going to wait until I've got it in place so I don't cut a wire too short. Um, I've left this one, this auto frog up so you can see that the frog always goes, the frog wire always goes in the middle, and then the track feeds go either side. Doesn't matter whether which one's positive, which one's negative, as long as one's one and one's the other, the the auto frog figures it all out. Uh, I have done a video on these, um, so I'll put a link up so you can see um, exactly what they're all about. Or as far as I'm concerned, a, a fantastic wee bit of kit. Um, so yeah, so. That keeps me happy with my need for neatness. Um, I've not stuck these down, I find that they just don't stick. So what's best is if you just collect a few wires and put in a, a cable clip. When you turn this upside down, it, it just keeps everything in place. Um, so yeah, so that is the circuit I was talking about. Um, so I will finish off this side uh, and then flip over the board and get everything connected up. Okay, um, so that's the two circuits set up for either set of points. Um, I'll just take you under the baseboard so you can see the, the circuit that I've shown you before. Now we've got these two that are hooked into the, the waggy things and then if I just take you under the baseboard I'll try and get some light. That's the two coming out, going along and clipped in to the bus wire. Now, if you want to see how the bus wire is done, I'll only use clips and spades and things like that. Um, I'll put a link for the bus wire video up in the, the corner of the screen. You can watch that. It is a 
almost sold a free way to set up the bus wire which is really good and as you can see it's really easy to extend it as well by just clipping in more droppers essentially so um, yeah nice simple neat circuit uh, I know where all the wires are going so if there's any problems I should be able to trace it so all that's left now is to tip this board onto its legs uh, and fit the track and then we should have a working junction so um, that'll be the next video hopefully <laughs> back in a bit right welcome back and that's the upper junction done it's uh, taken me longer than I expected it's um, despite that only being arms reach away it's actually quite hard work being uh, stretching over to to get to it and do all the the track laying and wiring and all that um, bit of filler there to fill in that gap um, but yeah it's, it's in so all the wiring's under there for the junction soldered where is it they are there and there there and there please don't judge my soldering I'm awful at it um, and I've got as planned my two main lines going round into the bridge that's as far as I've got to be honest that's as far as I've got I've not done anything here yet and then I've got the siding going round and in there if I put a buffer stop in there I can get my longest well my longest four item training so Falcon which is sitting there with um, with those carriages, those three that are scattered there, fits in fine. Um, so yeah, and I've got them going off down there. But uh, I've been at this most of the day, so I'm calling it quits here, because that is the main task done now, it's just a case of putting down tracks really. So then, um, what's left to do but show you it working, so. One thing I, I think is I've actually got a double slip here. Um, I think I think it was Hattons I got it off of second hand, so maybe it's a sim single slip. But it seems to be I can send the loco wherever I want. Unless I do that because I got the points wrong. Sort that. Still getting a grip for it. <laughs> so that batch comes. Cross no problem. And then if I put that like that and that like that, she should go straight across. that way and I think she should go back to where she came from getting better at this so yeah one fully functioning uh, junction that the trains can go anywhere on which is more than I planned but I'm not complaining um, so end this here next video will just be basically completing the upper level getting the loop done all the way around so um, thanks very much for watching uh, leave any comments you've got ask me any questions I'll try and answer them uh, subscribe if you like what you're seeing to keep up to date with the, the layout and yeah thanks for watching speak to you again soon cheers bye